In the next excerpt, the book's author, Leslie Hall Pinder, will join Columpa Bob in the reading. They will portray Alex and her mother, Sophia. Alex has gone to the rest home to see her mother and takes her out in a wheelchair across the grass along Point Grey Road to see the ocean. There's a reference to Russell, Alex's stepfather, and Sophia's husband. God, this is hard going. Uh, my friend Miles, who is native, told me... Are there, are there really any native people around anymore? I mean, haven't they all been absorbed or assimilated or something? Well, I, sp I suppose not, since you do have your friend Miles. But does he look like an Indian? <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to these assumptions. Let me tell you what I was going to say. An elder from the dog rib band, don't comment. Dog rib. Uh, dog the rib, Yukon. amazing. Uh, do, do you want to hear this? Of course I do. Um, just because I'm ill-informed doesn't mean I'm dull or stupid. What happened to this dog rib person? Uh, she was going to Ottawa from the Yukon, her first time on a plane. They were going to make representations to the government about their land claims. Anyway, she hadn't flown before and she was terrified. But she got used, used to it and eventually felt comfortable. One moment on the plane, uh, the plane began to really vibrate and she said, calm as ever, we must be over an Indian reserve. <laughs> the roads are always so bad. <laughs> that's good, yeah, that's good. So it's like I'm waiting for my reserve, my hole in the ground. Mother, are you feeling morbid? Look, if you want to live, you end up in my state. I remember there used to be a house right over there on this very ground. How nice of them to level it for us. <laughs> you know, Alicia, I was thinking this afternoon, just before you arrived, that I really haven't been a very good mother to you. I think we've managed. Tell me the truth, Alex. I really haven't been a good mother. M maybe I was okay for Peg, but not for you. Don't you think? You can tell me. I can take it on the chin. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. You can tell me. We're still in the game. Well... I remember once, I guess I was seven or eight years old, you and Russell were going out and, and you had on that purple cocktail dress with the chiffon top. I loved that dress. <laughs> and matching shoes, pot de soie. Wow, great shoes. I, I still have them, don't I? I always look good in heels. I could stride like a model. You told me before you went out that I should have a bath and wash my hair. And when you came back from the party, you asked me if I'd had a bath and washed my hair. I said yes. And then about a half hour later, you came up to me, leaned over, and you said, your hair smells like hair. Didn't you wash it? I said no. I guess I was pretty mixed up because of my dog. You stood there looking down at me and said, don't you know whether or not you've washed your hair? Don't you know whether or not you've had a bath? Do you need a psychiatrist? Don't you know? And you repeated it all again. This was the day after you had my dog put down. So Bosh. So I didn't. Bosh. What? Alicia, that never happened. Wh what do you mean? <laughs> Just what I said. That never happened, dear. Sorry. Wh which part never happened, mother? None of it. I never had your dog put down. It just didn't happen. Yes, it, it did. It did happen. You had my dog put away. He, he was sick once on your carpet in the living room. That was it. Alicia, this is ridiculous. I didn't put away your dog. You did. Instead of taking him to the vet to get him better like you said you would, you had him put down. That's what Russell told me. Russell? You believed Russell? And uh, I also saw the veterinarian's bill for euthanasia services, $25. <laughs> I didn't know what euthanasia meant, so I looked it up in the dictionary. It said, gentle and easy death. So I was relieved. Then it said, the bringing about of this, and that is what you did. 
If this really happened, as you say it did, why didn't you tell me before now? Why didn't I tell you before now? Why would I? So we could end up right here earlier in our lives? <laughs> you think you were a good mother to Peg? <sighs> You're kidding yourself. If this really happened, you would have told me. You would have said something. Why do you think Peg left? Years ago, is sailing around the world, never comes home because of you. That's why she can't take the way you are. Alex, stop. Why didn't you say something before? Why didn't I say something before now, Mother? Because you would have said it never happened. Oh, Alicia. The walls of myself were being scribbled on with a child's crayon, the bold swinging colors of emotion or the eradication of emotion, of sorrow for a stupid dead dog that just died. If this did happen and it didn't, well then I'm sorry. <laughs> this was as far as we could go. I hated having to push her. I wanted to just leave her there, stuck on the lawn, unable to fend for herself, me walking away, not knowing what was true. Maybe it had never happened. Maybe she had always been right. I felt like a blind woman standing in the middle of an intersection and snarled in traffic, waving a cane for eyes. The apotheosis for all the confusion and despair in my life, a traffic metaphor. Look, please don't be upset. I'm upset too. Mothers are always a tough deal. Only a mother could say such things to you that I said. Maybe you should try to be thankful that you have one. 